So we're here at Wheels and Waves 2017. Let's go and check it out. I'm here with legend skate man, Steve Caballero. The El Rolo flat track today. The Punk's Peak Hill Climb. The annual Wheels and Waves event just gets bigger every year. What started out as a small group of like-minded motorcycle enthusiasts getting together for a weekend back in 2009 has now turned into a huge motorcycle festival that provides non-stop motorcycling activities over three days in the town of Baritz in the south of France and San Sebastian in northern Spain. To kick things off the right way, the event launched straight into Moto Madness with the El Rollo flat track races in San Sebastian, where you can definitely find loads of interesting bikes, teams and riders. So before we get stuck into the action, let's go and take a look at some of these machines that will be racing here today. Here we have an ex-Kenny Roberts senior motorcycle. This has come all the way over from America. It was designed to have a Rotax engine in it, but the guy who bought it took it out, put in a Honda XR engine, and here he goes racing. This guy is in the novice class because he's new to flat track, but wow, what a great motorcycle. My goodness, this is a beautiful bike. Look at this, British BSA, an old vintage motorcycle. They used to race these back in America at the flat track. This was the bike to be on back in the 70s, late 60s. Great to see it back today. It's always great to see unusual and different motorcycles, like this Ducati with a homemade frame and gas tank. or this rather furry looking Harley. If riding a vintage bike and racing flat track isn't difficult enough, just add suicide shift, which is changing gear with your hand, and your clutch is on the foot. <laughs> Definitely interesting. What a beautiful machine here, an old Indian. This is also the same, suicide shift and clutch on your foot. And the suspension on the back is just the springs on the seat. Here we have the Ducati Scrambler. What changes have been made? Well, we've got no front brake for a start. The headstock's just had a little bit cut out here so we can just get a little bit extra lock stop when we're going sideways. And the tires have been changed. Some rain tires and really great for flat track. And that's it. Here's the Ducati Scrambler. Let's go racing. time to get out on track and as usual it was hectic and loads of fun. I entered the modern class which put me up against mainly motocross bikes and other flat trackers but the Ducati Scrambler was competitive and went well around this short track.
year, Oliveris has once again provided loads of smiles as the non-stop action went on throughout the day. Have it. Another great event. I got third in the modern class and fifth in the super final. I don't care where we finished, we just had a lot of fun. Oh, what a fun day. But after the sideways dusty fun on track, it was then time to get cleaned up and head into town. So we're here at the art ride in downtown San Sebastian. Inside here, we're going to find loads of cool motorcycles, artwork, and everything creative. Let's go check it out. There's so much to see on each of these three floors. Motorcycles and artwork are displayed everywhere. If you like bikes, you're gonna love this place as it's packed with creativity and unique machines that keep you entertained all evening. This bike, absolutely beautiful. It's actually taken one year of design and three years to build it. It's well worth it though, absolutely gorgeous. to a wall, but for crashing. <laughs> Good shot though.
and even more awesome bikes can be found outside in the parking lot. There you have it, that's the end of the art ride. Some amazing things inside and even pretty awesome bikes outside. Definitely recommend it. For the next day, we will this time head up into the misty hills above San Sebastian to compete in the Punk's Peak Sprint Race. It's another fun event which attracts many crazy bikes and outfits as we all try and sprint up the hill as fast as we can. So we're here at the Punk's Peak Hill Climb. Today it's time to go flat out for a mile up this hill. There's a bunch of classes, there's some really interesting bikes here, so let's go and check some of them out. This light-hearted event is again separated into classes. Scooters, vintage, modern and superbike. So you get a wide range of machines competing. As you can see, there are all kinds of machines here. Some taking the waves part of this event more seriously than others. For me, it was an absolute honor and pleasure to ride with ex-racer and MotoGP legend, Randy Mamola, who came over to support Alpine Stars and was racing a custom Honda in the vintage class. Well, I jumped on the same Ducati Scrambler and took part in the modern. Another ex-pro GP racer was Catcher Ponchkin on a powerful custom nitrous oxide Indian Scout. And as the mist starts to lift and the barbecue fires into action, let's go and check out more of these custom machines before the action gets underway. In the scooter class, it was definitely costume before horsepower, and even some of these low power machines needed a helping hand just to get away. The races are just fun and nothing too serious. The only rule is to start with your left hand on your head and the bike in neutral. When the gun pops, it's on. Get it into gear and go. Flat out as fast as you can. The sprint racers work on a knockout system. Get over that line first and you head back down to race again. Come second and you get to cheer from the sidelines or take a break from the action. Riders and spectators had a blast watching the action and it was a great way to spend the day, just hanging out on a hillside while you chatted about motorbikes with friends.
we did the drag race, we actually won it on the stock scrambler. So lots of fun. I didn't manage to win Pike's Peak, but we won Punk's Peak. Yes! Good do. Right, let's get out of here. Back to the village. After the sprint, we then headed back into San Sebastian to celebrate the modern class win. Our super special guest this year, Steve Caballero. I'd like to thank Alpine Star for inviting me. Everybody's here because they all love motorcycles. And first place in our class is one crazy mofo <laughs> on a Fox stock Ducati, Jamie Robinson. Yeah, Jamie! And our last class is the super bikes. And I do believe this is the first time a woman has won this category in a race. Katja Ponskin. While racing and art events go on in San Sebastian, the actual village of this Wheels and Waves event is held in the beautiful picturesque seaside town of Biritz in the south of France. This is where you can find all the vendors and manufacturers showing off their stuff. But it's not like a usual vendor space. Here, everyone does it in a creative way, customising bikes or products. And if you're lucky, you can see some of those skilled hands at work. A great collection of beautiful classic BMWs here. The village also has a mini skate ramp, so I headed down with skate legend Steve Caballero to have a chat about his love for those bikes. I'm here with legend skate man, Steve Caballero. Now Steve, you're at Wheels and Waves, usually you've got a board and four wheels, yeah. you've been ripping around on two <laughs> wheels, how is it? Oh man, um, I've been a motorcycle fan for years, Yeah. you know, and uh, I've been riding since 1982. You know, to me it, it kind of has that same feeling, that same gnarly rawness and, and also you can have like an individuality as far as just I don't know, it's, it's freedom. Yeah. So what do you think of this event? Fun, huh? Man, this is an amazing event. I've heard about it for years. Um, I've had friends tell me, like, you should come to this. This is everything that you're into. Yeah. Art, music, motorcycles. They have skateboarding and surfing. It's just a beautiful uh, backdrop. I, lo I love living life, you know, and uh, I love experiencing everything. So if I can if I can get my hand in, in, in something and experience it and, and, and share it with other people and, and make friendships and relationships on the way, um, I'm going to go for it. Steve Caballero, top man, amazing. Thank you. This is a custom bike from El Sartorio in Spain. Now these guys are amazing. They make some really great creations. This was built specially for the flat track. Loads of carbon fiber, a special chassis, incredible front end. Really, really good. Yamaha ran a competition involving eight builders from eight different countries, all doing custom builds on the XSR machines. No frame or engine mods allowed, but everything else was on. Some really different and creative builds actually came out of this competition, but which one is your favourite? For me, I think this Yamaha flat tracker looks the business.
at this Yamaha, it's even fitted with nitrous. Super fast and super cool. great to see a Royal Enfield here. I mean this is an iconic brand and it's absolutely fantastic to see the resurgence of Royal Enfield and what they're creating. This custom is very special. Imagine riding that. More great looking customs here, this time from Honda. Believe it or not, this used to be a Honda Rebel. Brilliant. I absolutely love the creativity here, really great. Oh, look at this, an ice racing Ducati Scrambler. <laughs> Amazing. It's always great to hang out with Randy, this time on the Scrambler Radio. I'm very, very happy to be here and uh, very surprised, but not surprised on how well organized and how well I think Luna gave it everything he is. I mean, people are just so much fun. And I promise you, it's something very, very special here, very unique. Wheels and waves. What a great place for it is. After our quick chat on the radio, Randy and I then grabbed a couple of cool custom bikes and headed away from the village and down to the coast. It was so awesome to ride with a Wheelie King himself. And of course, Randy didn't disappoint. <laughs> So then, Randy Mavola, what are you up to these days then, buddy? Well, I go to all, pretty much all the Grand Prix, 15 out of the 18 this year. Yeah. And uh, obviously, I enjoy that. How many GPs did you win? Uh, I won 13 Grand Prix. 13 uh, Grand Prix. And I, and I uh, finished second in the World Championship four different times on three different makes of motorcycles. Yeah. I started dirt tracking when I was 12 years old, and uh, my first time riding a road racer was a TA125. Yeah. Uh, it was in 1974. Uh, you know, I rode treaded tires, not even slicks at that time. Yeah. And road racing took me to Europe, and the big part of that was probably Kenny Roberts, Stevie Baker, Pat Hennon, yeah. those American riders were yeah. before me, and it was really Kenny who I was trying to follow. Yeah. But coming to Wheels and Waves, brought me back down to the reason why I ride motorcycles, yeah. uh, because motorcycles are fun. Yeah. Uh, if you have a fun sport, you're going to find fun people, yes. and immediately that glues us all together. You know, Spain and, and France are in love with, with the sport, uh, and Italy, and so much of, of, of Europe. Yes. Much different to the country that I come from, and it really is gracious to be able to see and be able to be a part of that, and to be accepted by a town. How many people being recognized in you? I mean, <laughs> You thought that you could only be recognised in a racing paddock and we're so far away from racing here on so many levels but 
You're a bit of a legend, so don't embarrass me. I <laughs> I kind of I kind of look at myself as just an enthusiast, yeah. and, and and so therefore I'm in 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 a facility full of enthusiastic people. So I don't mind talking about it and so on. And a lot of people like to put famous riders and things like that maybe on a pedestal, but you'll soon find out that I'm well grounded on the on the floor. Yeah. I'm well intact with the, with the people and I guess that's probably why I've been able to sustain something uh, well over 20 years after my, my last Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's something that uh, you know I want to carry on. I'm instilling that in my son. Uh, who loves racing as well, yeah, great. Uh, but it's something special to be able to do and, and to react with the fans. True legend, an absolute motorcycling hero. Randy, it's been awesome hanging out with you, buddy. Jamie, thank you very thank much. Thank you, buddy. My chat with Randy will bring it close to the 2017 Wheels and Waves event, but back on the bike said it was all smiles as Randy continued his antics. And that really just sums up this event and motorbikes in general. Great people, good fun, happy times.